So, apart from being the kind of person that uh, uses all of the available fonts uh, on the slide, which I apologise for, um, yeah, I'm a uh, consultant, and uh, it doesn't necessarily sit very easily for a person with a background in academic libraries working for a consultancy. Um, but I'm actually talking about an open source project, so this isn't going to be a sales uh, patter from me. Okay, so what we're trying to build is a new library system. And, yeah, new and library system, yeah, I don't know. That seems a bit of an odd idea again. I tend to say the same thing about this. And if you look on the right of the image there, there are some traditional concepts and they're obscured behind a, uh, something called an API. And I'm not actually going to talk about any of that stuff. I'm not going to talk about uh, the problems that are actually solved already in libraries. I think these are largely solved problems. Um, I'm not going to talk about things to do with patrons either. I'm just going to talk about this little bit of the stack here uh, to do with cataloging, linked data API and uh, the linked data that we have at the bottom of our system. And the thing that all of these have in common is, yeah, there we go, HTTP patch. Um, and HTTP patch, P patch runs through the entirety of our stack. And yeah, I, th I think it's quite interesting. Can I have a quick show of hands who actually knows what HTTP patch is? at all. There are a few hands, not many. Um, and I should admit that when I submitted the abstract for this talk, I became apprehensive about presenting on this topic because it's quite technical. I got some feedback from the uh, program committee which made me think, yeah, we can work this out a bit. I'm not sure whether or not I've done enough work to be honest, to make this relevant if you're only really interested in metadata, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. HTTP patch is a, an HTTP method, um, and you're probably familiar with some of these methods. Um, post get, they should be familiar. If you do any work with the web at all, put a bit less so and delete, possibly not really at all. Um, those give us the CRUD things that our database friends are very fond of. Um, so with these methods, you have all of the possibilities that you need to interact with the database. And why do you need to do something else? Um, and I'll have a look at that in a moment. Right, I've done all of the examples in JSON uh, for, it's not linked data, it's just some rough stuff that I put together just as examples. So, yeah, please don't ask questions about the examples. But, yeah, everything's in JSON because it's so readable. And uh, yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that, so a bit of a lol anyway. Okay. So, post and put can mean similar things. Um, if I want to create a resource, I can say put resource and then name the resource and then I can actually create a resource in this way. Um, if I don't know what the resource is called, I can actually just say, hey, I want to create a resource, give me, and what you get returned is some information about where that resource is then located. Um, now, put seems like a usable strategy here. So, yeah, I'm going to put something on the server. However, I don't agree with that strategy at all. Um, yeah, this means, if you don't speak Nor uh, Norwegian, I was going to say, if you don't speak German, this means uh, can doesn't mean that you should. Um, because if you're putting things onto a server and telling it where to put it. You're actually instructing the server in a way that I think is a bit strange. A client probably shouldn't instruct a server in this way. Um, so I'm going to say, let's not do that. So in a normal situation in our system, um, 
I would like to be able to ask for a resource, say I want to put an animal. I get a response with a header saying where this is then located, so I get back a resource one in this case. And then I can put data on that and then I am updating the resource. Okay. Then I think um, that I'm putting uh, data in. I'm calling the cat Mr. Tibbles. I'm getting the response, yes, I've created Mr. Tibbles, that's fine. And then I realise, oh, hang on a minute, the cat's not called Mr. Tibbles, it's called Felix, in fact. Um, and then I update it in this way by putting. But actually I haven't done what I thought I was doing. What I've actually done was overwritten the resource in its entirety because put only allows you to put an entire resource. You actually replace the, the resource in its entirety. So now I've got just a name Felix with no type. <coughs> um, So yeah, we've intended to update something, but what we've done is replace it entirely. So in order to update with put, you need to send lots of information. So if you have a long record, then you're going to be putting a lot of information, uh, sending a lot of information upstream. And this is the point I can say, I'm actually not interested in records, I'm interested in resources because we're doing linked data. Um, and you might think that that's splitting hairs, and it's coloured by interpretation and this is where I start my rant about how perhaps saying everything is a record, uh, everything is a document perhaps as well, that's also coloured by an interpretation. So yeah, um, I don't necessarily need to go there but except, except for the moment I'm saying if we update a resource in this way I want to say add data incrementally. So why? Um, and I think that Patch actually provides you an idiomatic way of doing what you think you're doing. You're actually saying add data bit by bit. And this fits in quite well with triples. You can create a nice responsive interface without doing very strange things, but, you know, masking what you're actually doing. You're actually doing post or put. Um, you can actually say, okay, Here's a triple, add a triple. Here's a triple, add a triple. You can create a different kind of interface more idiomatically uh, and more simply. It's lightweight, powerful, and it allows us to do new things in new ways. It allows us to think about cataloging, certainly, in a different way. So, how does it work? Well, patch is derived from a, uh, the common understanding of patch. And when I say common, I mean computer science understanding, actually. Um, and it's basically a description of the differences uh, between two states of a resource. You can disagree with my terminology later, if you wish. Um, in terms of our previous example, uh, we describe the change we want to make. We remove Mr. Tibbles and add Felix, and then we get a new state. So document B then has the changes we wanted, and that's easy. And now easy is a word I've learnt that I'm not allowed to use, because I say this to my developers quite a lot. This is easy. It's easy to think about, but actually it's not necessarily easy to do. And to implement this, yeah, there are some issues. For example, there's no uh, widely implemented, at least, uh, way of patching RDF in this way. Um, there are, however, approaches to patching JSON. Um, and JSON patch describes a set of uh, operations that can be used specifically with JSON documents. And we're in this JSON thing again. Um, this is a topic with me that perhaps you'll notice is. Not, it doesn't necessarily sit well. Um, so yeah, let's look at this. We have an operation here. We're saying we want to add some data. We have a path. We say we want to add this to the path of the document that's in the path A, B, C. 
And then we have the value that we actually want to add. And then you get a, uh, uh, a value in your JSON document at ABC. Um, now, JSON patch is widely implemented for patch, actually. Uh, and patch, as we maybe know already, is, very, is actually unused, basically. Is there anyone that has actually implemented patch in their system? One. Any others? No. Well, there you go. So, yeah. Um, the resource is a JSON document, and it has a few supported operations uh, that actually I don't need at all. I need add and delete, but we'll get back to that. And then it's using something else to select things in the document, and the extent to which JSON pointer is actually used, I don't really know. But I'm guessing not so much. Um, similarly, there's an XML patch format, and there you've got the operation, you've got where to add in the document, and then you've got the uh, uh, child that you're adding here. Um, and the, what you're doing here is basically XML, it's an XML workflow, and yeah, we're not doing XML either, we're doing RDF. Um, so, from my point of view, we have a few issues. And what I've noticed is that we use the Java platform, and if you like Java abandonware, then patch, these kind of patch formats are really well supported in that way, because basically all of the libraries were developed a few yeah, years ago, and then development just stops for some reason. Uh, because our workflow is oriented towards triples, the extent to which we work with documents, we're not really doing that. We just talk about triples. Um, statements on resources. Um, yeah. And I think that it's this focus on RDF that should actually make it so that perhaps we need to look somewhere else. And that was what we did. Yeah. We could have done some stuff to say, okay, well, we're patching RDF. We know it's RDF, but we're doing, we can take some other format in and we can manipulate that. But I want an API that's more direct than that. I want something that the developers can actually recognize. And since RDF is really simple in its structure, I think that the functions, as I said before, add and delete are enough. And then we've got JSON-LD. Um, how many of you use JSON-LD? There's quite a lot, yeah. Has that been a completely, yeah. Raise your hand if you think it hasn't been completely uh, painless using. Because I, I, I think it's a bit of a mess, I'm sorry. It's, it's, not been, it's not been the perfect experience for us. We've actually realized along the way that using a lot of N triples would have been a lot simpler, but because we're using JSON-LD, uh, because we're using JavaScript, we end up using JSON-LD, but anyway. We don't need the complexity of JSON-LD. Um, and when we're trying to patch with JSON patch, patching JSON-LD, it doesn't really understand it, and so we have to add more trickery somewhere else in our system. Um, and yeah, no, I'll just move on, I think. And there are some existing approaches that have been documented um, to doing patching. Uh, of RDF. I'll just quickly cover these. Sparkle Update actually does patching. That is basically what Sparkle Updates does in the simplest sense if you're inserting and deleting data. Um, and it's a useful thing. Uh, you can use that perhaps lower down in the stack, but I wouldn't want to have all of the possibilities in Sparkle Update available to do uh, simple patching in this way. And this brings us into Sparkle Patch, which is basically addressing the problems that I just mentioned, uh, but removes a few of the options, but it's still basically Sparkle Update. Um, and then there's Turtle Patch, which provides turtle-like syntax uh, for patching, and again, it's based on Sparkle Update, typically. And then there's RDF Patch, which I think provides the cleanest way of patching. Um, 
you can add, you can delete, as you see here. Um, now, I have some opinions about all of these things, but they all say in the share issues. They've not been implemented in the languages we use. Um, and, yeah, they're perhaps looking at details that we're not interested in. Um, so we actually implemented something in the language that we do use, which is Java. Um, and we are actually attempting to do something much simpler uh, than the other patch formats. Um, we're not solving the problems of patching arbitrary RDF. Uh, we're fixing a particular problem, which is doing that thing in our context, um, which is updating linked data in a library system. So we ended up with JSON. Um, as I said, we would have preferred N triples because that's cleaner when you're working with RDF. But we ended up with uh, JSON, not JSON LD, um, because basically it's something that the developers were familiar with and something that we could use with a uh, JavaScript client quite easily. Um, as I said, we only need add and delete, and we don't have B nodes. Um, how many fans of B nodes do we have in the room? Yeah. For us, B nodes are basically a, a thing that we try to avoid and at all costs, and we've not actually come upon a case where we've needed them at all. Um, and that's in a year and a half's development, so we've been able, been able to find simpler solutions in using other technologies. Okay. So we followed JSON patch's lead, but we also looked at RDF patch because it basically matched our needs much better. It was much simpler. Um, we ended up with rather verbose objects, and I think that that's unavoidable um, uh, without unpleasantness in interpreting JSON as anything other than basically strings, which is what you have uh, in JSON. Um, and I'm a strong believer in having explicit data and perhaps less smart software. Uh, and it looks like this. Uh, our patch format can have an operation, uh, the OP here, that can be add or delete. It has a subject, a predicate, and it has the object, and the object is the thing there that isn't a string. It's an object. Um, and let's have a look at a real-world example. So here we're adding, uh, basically, we know where we're adding it. We've got the subject. We know what the predicate is. We have a value. Uh, and the value actually here is specified as being URI. And this is a little bit of a tricky thing. It was because we couldn't find a very, very simple way of distinguishing whether or not this is a URI or a uh, plain literal. Um, we've got an example of a plain literal. That would get interpreted as an RDF plain literal in our case. Um, we can specify a lang string. We can have other data types. Uh, as I said, XSD URI is reserved for the uh, URIs that we're using. And then you can combine them as an object. You can combine as many uh, of these as you wish, so you can actually generate a large patch document. Uh, we typically do it two and two if we're deleting and replacing, uh, or we add individual triples, so what we're sending is very small chunks of data. Uh, but you could send big chunks, there's no real issue. Okay. Yep, that's the recap. Okay, implementation. It's Java, basically. Um, but it's worth noting that at the bottom of the stack, it all ends up as a uh, Sparkle update query anyway. Um, and yeah, I think that's fair enough. I think it's an understandable way of doing it. Um, we uh, yeah, have cores, uh, so our client basically just reacts to a, uh, the server using JSON and everything works fine. <coughs> And that's it, the things we've learned from doing this. Basically, running code is running code. Uh, if it works, do it. Um, we could have spent time waiting for a standard or in fact developing a standard, but we don't need very much for what we're doing. We have quite limited, uh, a limited spectrum of things we needed to do. 
And that's, I think, the thing. You should probably only implement the things you needed. I spent quite a long time implementing uh, lots of code to make it basically look like the linked data platform. And that was a waste of time. We actually stripped out the delete code. We stripped out the put code uh, because these weren't in use in the end at all. Um, the delete code ended up being put back in because we use it for cleanup, but that came much later when uh, the cleanup use case uh, came into our workflow. Um, and I can say that our cataloging interface now relies entirely upon this patch uh, format. So our way forward, uh, it builds on the knowledge we've gained, um, making small steps, incrementally deconstructing and reconstructing bibliographic data. Um, and patch helps us to do this because it actually is very deconstructed. Um, and we have a current sketch of our cataloging interface that says, okay, we start with a creator and then we dig down through a work and then finally towards publications or perhaps manifestations, if you prefer that terminology. Um, and using patch actually has simplified the way we interact with the data to the extent that it's allowed the user experience guy to do his thing in a completely different way. We've moved away from looking at records and I think that this is one of the positive outcomes of using this particular technology. And it's all done triple by triple using patch. And I think I've come to an end there. So, yeah, talk to me. I'm on Twitter. Um, I tweet about uh, yeah, bad library jokes, is one, and libraries and uh, socialism, mostly. And I'm going to make the unusual thing of ending with a joke. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much.